FLM, wide open thinking, world-class work, and far-reaching results. Now with locations in Minneapolis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. A strategic marketing and communications company dedicated to serving clients who specialize in the business of agriculture and the life of rural communities. Congressman Roger Marshall from Kansas's 1st District, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Spencer. Happy to be here. Happy to be visiting with AgriPulse. Uh, for starters, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, district and the kinds of agriculture in it? Sure. So we are the largest ag-producing congressional district in the country. Uh, Kansas and my district in particular is the, one of the world's largest producers of wheat. We're actually the largest sorghum producer in the country. Have a, a, the fastest growing dairy herd in the country. Uh, of course, we have corn and, and sorghum um, uh, and, and pork and a, a very large cattle industry as well. Cattle feeding, cattle calving operations. I think one of the biggest diversities of ag economies in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you were recently named as a member of the House Agriculture Committee. Uh, what are some of your priorities during your time on that committee? I think most importantly, just to have a voice at the table will be a welcome, refreshing moment for Kansas. Uh, Chairman Conway is already talking about the next farm bill, about getting to work on that. So we just want to be instrumental in, in the beginnings of that, in the origin of that bill, rather than coming in on the end of it. So we want to be up front uh, with commodity prices and cattle prices at near all-time lows. It's very, very important that we have a safety net. The average farm income in Kansas this year, I believe, was around $6,000. I know unfortunately person after person that's in jeopardy of losing their family farm because of these low prices so we need a safety net and I want to make sure that that's still there uh, for future generations. And uh, what can you tell us about some of the other committees that you'll be serving on here in Congress? Yeah we'll be on science and technology as well so I'm excited about that it's right in my wheelhouse of, of medicine and the science background that I've got and and interestingly science and technology has significant oversight over the EPA and of course EPA seems to be instrumentally uh, overly involved in agriculture so we're looking forward to get to know some of those people as well. Do you anticipate any uh, any commonality there between the sciences and agriculture, things like biotechnology, exactly. uh, things like some of the, the new crop protection products, uh, maybe coming up in, in correlation with uh, being a member of a science community and an agriculture committee during your, your time in Congress? Absolutely. And one of the things we're very proud of in Kansas is NBAP, the National Bio Agro Defense Facility. We think it'll be a mecca of research, especially for agriculture. And uh, there's so many uh, caveats running in, in, in tandem with that at Kansas State University. And the wheat people have a great research association there as well. So a lot of the grants uh, are originated in this, in this particular uh, committee. Uh, so I, I think it'll be great for us being uh, agriculture, technology, there are synonyms anymore. Aside from strictly your committee work, uh, being a, a congressman in general, uh, two years from now when you're wrapping up your first term, what are some of the things you would like to have accomplished? What are some of the goals that you have for your first term here in Washington? Yeah. You know, number one, we need a stronger economy. Whether you think national defense or schools are the most important uh, issue for you, we have to have a stronger economy. I do want to make sure we have a stronger national security position two years from now than we do yesterday. And finally, uh, I want to see a terrific replacement bill for health care. I want Americans to have quality, affordable health care, and I want to be very much an integral part of what that looks like in the future. Now you mentioned healthcare. You've got some experience uh, personally in that field, uh, an OBGYN with, I believe, about 5,000 births to your, to your credit? That's correct, right. We've delivered almost a baby every day for the past 30 years of my life. Hmm. So you're used to bringing new life into the world. How do you and your, your fellow freshman colleagues bring new life into Congress? Well, it's exciting. I'm so proud of my freshman class. I believe there's 29 of us in, in the Republican side, and it's a wonderful diversity. I don't think there's a true politician in the entire class. We have uh, 10 of us have military experience. We have a sheriff. We have a chief of police um, and two physicians, a dentist. So just a wonderful diversity. And that diversity was going to breathe new life into this Congress. And aside from your medical background, I also understand you have an agricultural upbringing as well? A absolutely. So I was the fifth generation person born to the family farm. I grew up working on family farms, uh, spent several years at a feedlot or, uh, working as well, so certainly quite a bit of experience. So how does that agricultural upbringing help you, or how do you think it's going to help you uh, during your time in Congress? 
Well, I think first of all, just the work ethic that everybody in agriculture has. You, know, you get up early in the morning and you work till you can't work anymore. Uh, to me, a 10, 12 hour day is a short day. So I think first of all, it's the work culture that we're brought up in agriculture. And then I think just to understand, uh, gosh, I can remember two of the best wheat crops our family had, losing one to a hail storm, like maybe two weeks before harvest and seeing another uh, wheat field just set in the field with six inches of rain uh, from the night and not being able to get in the field and just watch that wheat slowly fall down. And I, I get it. I understand exactly what it means that regardless of how good of a farmer you are, uh, Mother Nature is even stronger. And gosh, I think in Kansas, one out of four, one out of five crops is, is nearly destroyed by Mother Nature. So I, I, at least I can feel their pain. When this country was first started, uh, farmers and people directly involved with agriculture was a much higher percentage of the workforce than it is now. With that in mind, do you think the political system, the societal system in general, thoroughly understands agriculture to a, to a satisfactory level? No, no, it absolutely doesn't. I, I'm just embarrassed to, to talk to people that they think that you grow beef in a, in a grocery store, that they don't understand what organic means. Uh, they don't understand that agriculture, were, that, that the farmers were conservationists before conservation was in vogue. They don't understand that the, the farms that we own are the inheritance of our children, and nobody wants to protect and make that land better than, than we do. Uh, I think there's a big disconnect as people have moved into the cities. Uh, believe it or not, food is actually a, a, a national security issue. Uh, and it's gonna be, become even more so in the future as there's more and more threats to it. If you want safe, reliable, affordable food sources, then we need a, a strong farm economy. And I don't think many people get it. We're taken for granted, unfortunately. And let's move away from Washington and talk about you personally for a little while. Uh, when you're back in home in, in Great Bend, Kansas, what are some things that we might find you doing in your in your spare time? Gosh, I love hunting and fishing. Um, probably that's what I'm missing right now. I, my wife, I talked to her last night and she was putting the dogs away. My, I have two labs, a yellow lab and a chocolate lab. and. I uh, heard them barking in the background. So I think you'll find me hunting and fishing. We're very involved in our church, very involved in our community. Uh, I'd rather go to a Great Men Panther basketball game than go see the Chiefs play. Though I love seeing the Chiefs and wish them well this Sunday. <laughs> and uh, speaking of, uh, of your family, I understand there's a family connection behind the, the tie that you're wearing right now. Right, so I got up this morning and I saw this tie in my closet. This is a tie that my daughter made for me in a children's church project over 20 years ago. So just was thinking of her today, so I put it on. And I'll, I'll wrap up with this one. Uh, you mentioned some of your community involvement uh, back home. You were involved in a number of things, a board member at a bank, uh, did some administration at your hospital, worked with Rotary as well. So you were already fairly busy uh, with uh, a lot of community involvement. So why take the step to join the United States Congress? About. Three years ago, um, my wife and I started having this discussion, are we leaving the country better than we found it or not? And by the time our grandchild was born two years ago, that discussion had swelled. And for the first time, my wife looked at me and said, you like to fix things, it's time for you to go to Congress. We weren't leaving it better than we found it. Whether it's a $20 trillion national debt, national security issues, uh, a sagging economy. My two older children have graduated oh, you know, five, seven years ago, and they don't know what a strong economy even looks like. Um, this country is not going in the right direction. We need to move it in a, in a different direction, and I want to be part of the solution. Congressman Roger Marshall from Kansas' 1st District, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Spencer.